Hello, I'm Jim Kearns. Welcome to the Robotics Lab here at Lawrence Tech. And I'd like to start a new series of videos on algebra. Um, it's not something I specifically teach here, obviously, but um, it's something I've seen students struggle with, and it's something that's important as a fundamental subject, and hopefully I can bring something to the table for you. The general format of these videos is I will be trying to provide examples, explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as I do it for an example. And I'm also going to include problems for you to do. So um, when you, if you're looking at one of these videos, get your pencil and paper out, okay? And I'll, there'll be points in the video where I'll, I'll give you an example, then I'll give you a problem and ask you to pause the video, sort the problem out. If you need to rewrite, rewind the video to follow the steps through, then that's your opportunity to rewind it and work a separate problem following the same steps. And we'll kind of go back and forth like that. I Hopefully that works for you. One of the couple basic things, um, algebra does not stand for all gibberish. <laughs> It's just, algebra just means a process. It's a process that we work through to get to a solution to real world problems. It is relevant. Um, a lot of students say, well, what's the point? Uh, why do I do have to do this problem? Why can't we use numbers? Well, there's a number of things. First of all, numbers don't work, okay? Um, let's take Newton's law, second law. Force equals mass times acceleration, okay? So that's an equation that has physical meaning. It relates to real things in the real world. And I can use it to solve problems. Say I have a force. I'm going to apply a force. And I have a certain mass. And I want to know how fast it's going to accelerate. I just rearrange that equation algebraically, and I can sort out my answer. Um, if I have I want to know how much this marker weighs, right? I'll put it on a screen, or on a screen, I'll put it on a scale, okay? And I want to know the mass of that marker, and I know that um, the acceleration of gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared, okay? And I can measure the force you know, by deflecting a spring or through a force sensor, and I can calculate the mass, okay? So I can use these equations, even though for the most part I'm not using numbers, because by abstracting away from the numbers, I have higher, more meaning. I can get, understand it better. It's, if instead of F equals MA, all I knew that was, I told you that 10 equals 5 times 2, what does that mean, right? That's numbers. Without understanding what those numbers mean, it's meaningless. I could even say, well, I have a force of 10, and I have a mass of 5, and I have an acceleration of 2. Um, OK, you know. But it's this that has the meaning, not, not the numbers. So that's why not the numbers. And frequently in my classes in statics or mechatronics or robotics, um, we'll be working through a problem and I'll get to a point and say, well, the rest is just algebra. And I'll take that leap to the final answer because I expect you guys to know how to do the algebra without me doing it on the, on the blackboard and, and spending your time. So, yeah, it's important. It's important in the real life. As an engineer, I can tell you it's just algebra. You know, that's my, uh, my feeling. You know, I, I, I just have to be able to do it. Um, it's not always immediately obvious as you're learning the, process, the subject, but the reality is, yeah, it is relevant, and yeah, you do want to use it. The best way to learn something is to practice, right? Uh, let's say you want to play basketball, okay? you're going to spend a lot of time doing free throws, right? You're just going to do them over and over and over again. The first few, you're going to miss. After a while, you'll start to get them in. And keep doing them, after a while, you start to get good at it, right? Math and algebra are no different. If all you do is listen to me, blah, 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 listen to your teacher in class, blah, 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 
and hope that somehow s s the sound you know, sticks somewhere between coming in here and going out there. Something sticks in the middle and you know about algebra. Not going to work. Sorry. You've got to practice. And that's why we're going to be stopping for examples through this whole process, is to give you a chance to just practice it right on the spot, okay? Um, some of the examples may seem meaningless, right? You know, so I tell you um, 7x plus 14 equals 8, you know, solve for x. What's the point? There is no point other than the practice, right? If you're learning to play basketball, one of the exercises you do is you know, they'll lay out a bunch of cones on the court and you have to dribble going back and forth like that, right? What's the point, you know? You never see somebody running out in the middle of a basketball game and putting cones in the court so that the players can dribble, zigzag back and forth during a game, right? It's not a game skill. Why would you ever do it? Well, you do it because it's, it's practice. It's ball handling. It's learning fundamentals. Same thing here. It's practice. This is ball handling. This is learning fundamentals. The more you do it, it the more you, you, the better you get at it, the easier it becomes. So if you're struggling, the solution is not to just say, I can't do it. The solution is to get in there, do more problems. You know, the homework that your teacher assigns, that's the minimum, okay? Do extra problems, do extra five problems, 10 problems, how many it takes? Because the more you do, the better you get and the easier it gets. And then, you know, a year from now, you'll be sitting there, well, duh, that's easy. Any idiot can do that. And it's something that you start out struggling with, just the practice and the repetition. It, cha it literally changes your mind. The more you, athletes talk about muscle memory, it's not the muscles, but it's the pathways of the neurons in your brain that actually get reinforced. Same thing happens when you do math problems. Keep doing them, you get better. I don't care if you are a math whiz or a math whiz. Um, you're going to do better if you practice. Okay? So I'll get off my soapbox and let's get on to talking about some of the very basic fundamentals of algebra. Okay, this is probably more of an algebra pre prerequisite, but I'll, I want to touch on it quickly, just to give you an example of how we're going to work and do a couple problems. And you may find it helpful. Um, and let's talk about numbers and the number line. If I have a number line, you know, I can put zero in the middle. I can put any number out here. I can be 10, you know, positive 10, minus 10. The exact numbers don't matter. Um, you may find it helpful and double check with your teacher to make sure you're not going to have a problem with that. To, if you're struggling with positive and negative numbers, just draw the number line on the top of your exam sheet or on a piece of scratch paper, paper because it, it kind of helps you kind of visualize things. Suppose I give you a problem like um, 5 minus 6 equals, right? That's just arithmetic. Um, I know 5 is going that way, positive, and I know 6 is going that way, negative, right? It's minus 6, and 6 is bigger than 5, so I'm going to go further that way than I am this way, so I'm going to end up with a number that's a small negative number, okay? Drawing that out might help you if you're struggling with negative numbers and things like that, okay? So what we'll do in this video at this point is I touch on more topics. I'd say, okay, let's, let's, let me give you some problems. We'll pause, pause the video, do them, and then I'll explain them. So one of the problems would be 5 minus 6 equals what? You know, 3 minus 2 equals, and minus 2 minus 3 equals, and minus 3 plus 2 equals, okay? I'd say pause the video and then Hopefully you're gonna actually do these on pencil and paper, and if this isn't, if this is trivial, you don't need to do it, right? If you're comfortable with this, if you're struggling with it, pause and do it, okay? And again, we'll go through the, give you time. Okay, um, are we back? Okay, so five minus six, again, the negative part is larger, the difference between five and six is one, and it's a negative one because the negative part is larger. 3 minus 2, the difference between 2 and 3 is 1. The positive part is larger, so it's going to be a plus 1. Minus 2 minus 3, they're both negative. So I'm going to go minus 2, and I'm going to go more for minus 3, so I'm going to end up 
quite a ways down that negative thing, right? And I'm going to end up with negative 5 and minus 3 plus 2. Again, the negative is larger, the positive is smaller, so I'm going to have a negative answer. And the difference between them is 1, so I get minus 1, okay? Just using the number line and the idea that negative takes me that way, positive takes me that way, and the distance you go is a function of the magnitude of the number. Okay, so that's a wrap for the first introductory part. I hope that made sense. I just tried to kind of cover why algebra and what we're going to, uh, how this process is going to work. Next video, we'll talk about commutative, distributive, associative properties, and we'll stick with just numbers for now, just to get the uh, concepts into your head a little better. Okay, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned.